Yeah, so we have a group of students here that are part of an undergraduate class called Biomechanics of Human Movement. And they're taking part in a class project that is studying uh, how people move. And one of the facets of that is how our muscles contribute to movement. And so how active are they when we perform certain movements? How, um, when do they turn on? When do they turn off? Things like that. And recently we've kind of gotten interested in surfing related studies. Um, we find that our students are really excited about these projects. And so I came across the ergo vest and thought that it would be a, a perfect experiment for our students to carry out. Um, it, essentially comparing muscle activity across a few different conditions. And so the, um, the premise today is to take a look at certain muscles in the back, in the low back and the upper back, to see if there are changes in how active they are, when they turn on, when they turn off, and to see if there are differences between conditions of wearing a vest while it's inflated, wearing a vest when it's not inflated, and wearing no vest. Because we think there, there may be an effect of compression as well. We're, we're seeing that in some of our wetsuits as well. And then we're gonna be using a tank here today uh, that actually shoots a stream of water across and then you can measure exactly the amount of, of, of uh, miles per hour that that mm -hmm. water is, is coming across. Mm -hmm. And then the students, they'll be using uh, uh, sensors on their backs, yep. correct? And then you'll be measuring the certain muscle groups. Yeah, so we have a, a really cool system for measuring muscle activity. It's actually a wireless sensor that sends a signal to a computer that's out of the water, obviously. Um, and so we, we have a very controlled environment here with our swim flume where we can control the velocity of the water and, and we can measure that to make sure that it's flowing at the rate that we think it's flowing. Um, we have the same surfboard that everyone's gonna use and paddle. Even though subjects are all going to be of different height and different weight, um, we're comparing conditions within subjects and so everybody is trying every condition with the same board and at the same paddling velocity. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and then uh, I, I noticed that you took our our, reg, our regular uh, oral inflation valve and you added your own valve so you can put a precise amount of air for each each tester so that everything is the same for each tester. Yeah, that was a little bit of a challenge, how to inflate the vest the same for everyone so that we could make a, a direct comparison or, or to at least make it as consistent as possible. Uh, the, the pressure is low, as, as you mentioned, and so trying to do it by setting the pressure consistently probably wasn't a very good option. Um, and so we ended up doing it um, using a method of calculating volume, I guess. And so we're just using a simplified uh, a bike pump and we, through trial and error, figured out how many pumps it took to get it to a, a standard, um, standard amount of inflation. And so... Great, let's see, let's see it go. This sounds exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we're comparing four muscles. Each one of these lines with the bursts are a separate muscle. And so you can see each, each burst represents when the muscle's on and when it's off. Um, so you can see the, uh, so, so we have four muscles here. We have a back extensor muscle on the top. We have a shoulder retraction muscle underneath. Then we have a uh, upper trapezius. This is the muscle that's at the back of your neck that is active when you do a shrug. And then the bottom is uh, latissimus dorsi, and that's a muscle that's active during the, the propulsive phase of the paddling stroke. And so you can see each time there's a burst, we know that's when the muscle is most active. Um, you can see the erector spinae. It doesn't look like there's a, a lot of distinct bursts, but there still is activity. So it's it's activated for most of the paddling stroke. So we, we don't see really nice periods where it's on and off. 